It's that time of the year again. While we won't be strolling on Hollywood Boulevard, we will be strolling along West Street and Main Street in Annapolis for the 11th Annual Annapolis Film Festival. From March 23rd to the 26th, you can enjoy more than 70 films, Q&A sessions with filmmakers, panels, coffee chats, and yes, plenty of parties. Tickets and passes are on sale now at annapolisfilmfestival.org. But right now, we're going to give you a taste of things to come as we interview directors and producers of some of the hottest movies on the slate. Joining us on the phone today is Josh Green from sunny California, who tells me it's wet out there today. Not cold and damp like it is here, but wet. <laughs> How are you? I, I'm well. Yes, that's exactly right. We've had a, a major atmospheric river, and it's definitely been one of the strangest winters in California history, but uh, something to potentially get used to. So. Well, Josh is the director of a film that will be, I believe, debuting at the Annapolis Film Festival, which is March 23rd to the 26th. The film is called Waves Apart, and it will be showing at the main theater in Maryland Hall on Sunday, the 26th at 10 a.m. Um, this is somewhat of a short film. I mean, it's only 25 minutes long. I guess it's technically considered a short, I suppose. Um, but it's really got a very interesting topic. It's the story, and and I'm going to give the real brief overview, and you can fill in the blanks here, certainly. But as a young Jewish man in Chicago, you moved to California, suffered all sorts of uh, racism and anti-Semitism, decided to take up surfing because that seemed like the thing to do, and you found it there, too. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, so... Uh our film Waves Apart uh, covers that. This is actually going to be our, our East Coast premiere. Um, we, we recently played at the uh, Santa Barbara International Film Festival, uh, and now we're sharing our film with audiences uh, on the other side of the country. And, and we're so excited because of uh, our film story and its powerful messages. Uh, basically, surfing, like all other sports, has its own complexities and, and is not uh, as black and white as it may seem on the surface. Uh, I'm not here to say that um, the sport is uh, vehemently uh, racist or anti-Semitic, but uh, I, I think we would be doing uh, our culture a disservice if we didn't examine uh, areas in the past where we may have fallen short. What sort of surprised me in this, and I have only seen the trailer of this, sur surfing to me has always been portrayed, I guess, as the uh, the outcast sport, and that's my own sort of terminology there. It was sort of a, a sport of misfits, if you will, and everything else. And it sort of surprised me to learn that, you know, as you felt as yourself was a misfit, I mean, and it is a documentary, so this is about you, that you weren't embraced by that community. That really sort of surprised me. Yeah, well, uh, you know, waves are a scarce commodity. Um, you know, like in the sport of skateboarding, uh, skaters have cement and they can skate wherever they want. So skaters are nice to each other. Uh, surfing, there's a limited number of waves. And so there's competition for them. And uh, a lot of the times I found that in the Californian brand and specifically the Southern Californian brand of surfing, a lot of times that fierce competition uh, would e extend itself, overextend itself uh, into uh, bigotry um, xenophobia. And I know this all sort of came to head, I guess it was during your bar mitzvah and you, uh, my understanding you had it at a surf shop. So, uh, my parents, they were awesome enough to help host my bar mitzvah party at our, our town surfing museum, uh, which later I realized is actually one of the most important, uh, surfing museums for the whole sport. They have, uh, a massive collection of old boards and and one of those boards in fact is a board from the 1930s known as the swastika model and it's engraved with a uh, nazi swastika is actually the first mass-produced surfboard uh, built in los angeles so this was a model of a surfboard i mean this wasn't somebody's own customization this was the uh 
type of board that they were making and each each um, board that they sold had the swastika on it. Holy mackerel. That's uh, that's unbelievable. Now, how, how old are you? I mean, I don't know whether that's inappropriate to ask, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, so uh, I, I had my bar mitzvah as a 13-year-old, which is right around the time when I fell in love with surfing. Uh, and I didn't learn about the swastika model boards until um, afterwards. It sort of came to me in waves. My parents uh, would occasionally and nonchalantly remind me, hey, uh, do you remember those Nazi surfboards that we had removed from your party? And there, there's an argument to be made that, oh, the boards were built in the 30s, and so the swastika didn't mean what it meant then. I'm not necessarily interested in exploring that argument too much because of the fact that uh, fascist imagery and, and Nazi rhetoric did not just go away. Um, after World War II and surfing, in fact, I think the examples only become more egregious. In certain certain aspects, I, I totally agree with you there. Have you have you found that the, you know, I, I know we're not carving swastikas on surfboards anymore, but have you found in your experience, and you are still surfing out in Southern California, right? Yes, uh, you know, I grew up in a very a very uh, monolithic community. Um, which lacked diversity. I was certainly one of the only Jewish uh, kids in town. And so I, I endured a fair share of, of uh, verbal uh, bullying and occasional physical incidents as well. And, um, you know, for me, this automatically followed me into the water because the same kids that I saw at school, they all happened to be the most notable surfers in town. And so that that came sort of hand in hand. And then I um, came to film school at USC and I met more Jewish people. And I even met a Jewish surfer from San Diego who said that, um, you know, just following Hanukkah about a year ago, um, some guys spray painted a swastika by his beach and uh, he, he couldn't help but notice it while out in the water. So, yeah. Wow. So it's so it's not getting any better. Let me say this. I, I think surfing as a whole is improving. It is becoming more inclusive, especially um, because of, uh, you know, this younger generation um, sort of taking back the sport, uh, you know, demythifying the sport. Um, and I think our film, you know, hopefully adds to that conversation. Uh, you know, the film does explore sort of this underbelly of surfing's past, but then transitions into this hopeful and somewhat spiritual piece um, that follows um, the life of different Jewish surfers, including some world champions. You look at certain sports. Are are Jews the super minority of the surfing world? I would say that there's a stereotype in general that Jewish people uh, can't be athletic and they can't excel at their sport, uh, which is something that I wanted to challenge in my own surfing ability uh, and in the making of this film. And uh, like I just mentioned, we went out and we met professional surfers who happen to be very proud of their Jewish identity. Um, notably, uh, when you come to the Annapolis Film Festival, you'll meet uh, on screen world champion surfer Sean Thompson, who uh, won the world tour in the 70s and completely uh, redefined surfing with his cutting edge performances. I mean, it kind of blows my mind that this that this exists and it's a thing. And I, I feel bad that you obviously had to go through this and 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 dealing with it with the sport that you truly love. Yeah, a lot of people ask me uh, after making this film, Josh, do you still surf or has this changed your mind about surfing? And I absolutely do still surf uh, because to me it's it's more important than uh just a hobby or a fun activity i i especially after making this film take a deeper respect with me when i go to the water and i i cherish those moments and i'm not going to let um people take that away from me whether um they don't like me because i'm jewish or they didn't like my film uh, regardless 
I'm 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 proud of what we made. Our our team is proud of what we made, and uh, I'm gonna keep surfing. Well, good on you. Good on you. They have said I have heard said that it's not a sport; it's a lifestyle. And I, I think it's probably very similar to golf or maybe tennis even to a point where it's something that you can do pretty much all your life. Yeah, I, ideally, I'd, I'd love to be surfing into my 60s. And I think I can achieve that. Uh, you know, I, I Even when I can't get out in the water, I'll be stretching and, and watching surfing and uh, making sure that I'm ready each summer to just continue to, to push myself. For me, water is my backyard. You know, I, I grew up right here, and um, I imagine that's the case for uh, a lot of people in, in, in Annapolis. I've, I haven't been yet, and I'm really looking forward to exploring the city for the first time. I was very um, excited to see that I would be staying near the water. And, yeah, I think like golf, it's it's uh, very important to our DNA. Well, good. It's, well, I guess you answered one of those questions. Uh, will you be attending the Annapolis Film Festival? And the answer obviously is yes. And again, the Annapolis Film Festival is the 23rd to the 26th of March. Tickets and passes are available at AnnapolisFilmFestival.com. Will you be doing any panels or anything, you know, a Q&A after the showing? Yeah, my, my understanding is... Uh, I'll, I'll screen the film Sunday morning, uh, the 26th, and then there's a Q&A following that. And I, I'm actually going to be the featured speaker for that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Again, it's our East Coast premiere. So it's it's just really special that a film we made in um, Southern California is now um, taking the East Coast by storm. And um, hopefully we'll continue to share it around uh that side of the country. Very cool. Well, as, as a director, what do you hope to get out of a film festival? Uh, hopefully I'm, I'm looking to uh, connect with audiences. Uh, you know, one thing that I love is when people come up to me afterwards um, and, and share their reactions to the film. One reaction that we get a lot is similar to what you've described uh, on this call is, uh, th- waves apart. This is something I've never heard about, or I was completely shocked to find out that that existed. And so we are very, very grateful that we're able to uh, enlighten, educate, and also entertain with this film. Fantastic. Well, what is, after, obviously you're coming to the Annapolis Film Festival. What's up next for Josh Green? Do you have any other projects in the works? So actually, At the Annapolis Film Festival, I'm also uh, pitching a new documentary as part of the Annapolis Short Film Fund. Uh, I'm co-directing this project with uh, a friend of mine who I met at USC Film School. Uh, He's an African-American filmmaker named Luke Harris. And as sort of a spiritual sequel to Waves Apart, um, the film also deals with uh, themes of Jewish culture uh, and black culture. Our, our documentary is exploring the uh, long history between the black and Jewish communities in the United States. Interesting. Interesting. And you're going to be pitching that during the shorts challenge. We're going to be pitching that. Yes. And uh, he'll be there as well. So we're doing this as a co-directing uh, duo. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, the panel, the judges connect with our film. Uh, we're certainly very uh, energetic and excited to do it. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations on being accepted into that and good luck with that. That's for sure. Thank Josh, you. Josh Green is the director of Waves Apart, and that will be having its East Coast premiere on Sunday, March 26th at 10 a.m. at Maryland Hall in the main theater. And this is a film that you really want to see. Uh, it'll make you scratch your head. It'll make you think, which a lot of these films that we see during the film fests do. That's what they're designed to do. And you are a very young, I mean, you're, are you still at USC? No. So I graduated uh, last May. And so I'm coming up on one year out of school. Um, so yeah, very young though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you won't be saying that for too much longer. But uh, do, you, do you miss Chicago or do you not remember it too much? Well, uh, I was born there. I moved out of the city uh, when I was 
a mere baby, but I'll tell you this, I've, I've gone back many times. Most of my family is still there. Um, and I feel very connected to, um, Chicago. I don't know very much about the East coast. Uh, I'll be honest. So this is going to be a treat for me. If anybody has uh, recommendations on what I should do in Annapolis, um, Maybe you can email me. <laughs> I, I will. I will absolutely email you some suggestions there. And we're so glad to have you coming here. Where can we learn more about you in the movie? Does the movie have a website yet? Uh, no, we we don't have a website for this film, but um, I have a website for my production company and you can find it on Google. You can find me online on my YouTube. Um, if you go to landportproductions.com, that's uh, my production company, which I will be using to uh, continue making uh, important stories like Waves Apart. Um, you'll find the trailer on that website if you're uh, looking forward to seeing it at the Annapolis Film Festival. Well, as everybody should be, again, Sunday, March 26, 10 a.m. at Maryland Hall in the main theater. And Josh will be doing a Q&A afterwards and leading that. And you definitely want to check out the shorts. And I'm not exactly sure when that is. I think it's on Saturday, but the shorts program um, where they do the competition is is really very interesting to see because you get an, an insight onto how a movie or a film gets started. And I think um, it'll be very interesting for everybody to see. Josh Green, thank you so much for your time today. We look forward to seeing you on the 26th, if not before. And I will make sure I email you with some things that you may want to check out if you have a little bit of downtime here, but I don't think you will. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there for, for several days. So um, looking forward to uh, trying all the great food that you have to offer, um, seeing the parks and the harbor. So thank you so much uh, for having me. And uh, I can't wait to share this film at Annapolis. Absolutely. Leave your surfboard back home. The waves here stink. You can see on the sun as you walk along. Remember, passes and tickets for the Annapolis Film Festival are available right now at AnnapolisFilmFestival.org. I've got mine. Now you need to go get yours, and I'll see you at the movies. Hey, hey, hey.